Hello and welcome back to another Revit Architecture 2009 CAD clip. I thought I'd try something interesting uh, for a change and do kind of a mini series on one um, custom family in particular which um, has all kinds of great little tips in it for you. Um, too many tips to actually mention. So what I'm going to do is uh, demonstrate how this custom beam, architectural beam works. Um, in this first CAD clip and then we'll break it down in the next four or five um, videos on how to build this um, custom architectural beam. Um, at first glance you will look at this and think well that's not really that complicated but there's a little more um, than meets the eye going on in the background with this particular family. So we'll start out by demonstrating um, how it works here. I've got three different views set up, a front view, a 3D view, and a plan view. Um, I've got the family loaded in here. It's called linear beam with abutments. And I'll show you how it works and some of the different options and parameters. And then we'll break it down and build that uh, family, show you how to do it. And the lessons you will learn in this little mini series here very valuable lessons um, you can then further apply to your own custom family so really the the key point here is all the little lessons you learn to build this beam you can then apply to all kinds of other families and this could be Revit structure or Revit MEP or Revit architecture so to start with we'll just show you how um, how the beam works so I can go up here and pick component or drag it in from my project browser linear beam with abutments. So I'm just going to start by dragging in the first kind of hitting escape here and then in here I just need to zoom in and out there's a bit of a graphics anomaly taking place there. Now the first thing I can do is I can align this. It's a linear beam. I can stretch that manually anytime I want. Nothing fantastic about that. We've all seen families that kind of do that, a linear based family. I can do an alignment and I can align to this grid line here and I can lock that align to here, this edge over here and lock that as well. Okay, escape, escape. I can then click on this grid line and we can nudge this and we can see what happens over here. I can click on this grid line, nudge that. So that's nothing fantastic. So the next thing we can do is we can add a material to this. So we can click on this object. I can go up to the properties and we can say, well, the beam material is, you know, wood beam. And we'll show you, I just created a new material and added a rendered um, pattern to that and some rotation. So I'll add my wood beam material to it. Hit OK, hit OK, click out, and there's my beam. Okay, and we can look at this in um, in hidden view or you know wireframe or whatever we want doesn't really matter okay so go back to shaded views now the other option we have on this I can go into any view I want it doesn't matter I can pick on this beam and I can add in our little abutments so I can go to the properties after I've selected it and say I want to turn on the right side abutment so I do that turns on the right side abutment brings that little guy in I can then click on it in any view it doesn't matter and then say okay I want the left side abutment turned on as well so we can turn on that visibility now one of the challenges in here believe it or not and we'll learn this is how to get rid of these little seam lines and by default if we use within the family itself at the family editor level if we use a join geometry it will get rid of these seam lines between the abutment and the beam but the problem with that is when you do a join geometry between objects in a family and you turn one of the objects off it turns off the visibility of all the objects that are attached to it so our first thing we would do to solve this is we would think well I'll just go into the family editor and join geometry between this little abutment object and the main beam object and then I'll get rid of that seam line similarly this seam line right in between here if you don't mind the seam lines then that's fine uh, you can just leave it as is and and you can you know learn from that but I want to get rid of those seam lines so what we have to do and this was a, the probably one of the biggest challenges um, is I can go in um, and use my um, 
line work tool here and use invisible lines and I can go in and I can invisible those lines and it actually takes a couple of clicks and believe it or not um, doing that what I'm doing right here and it's view specific turned out to be the biggest challenge I can do the same thing by going into here turning that off turning that it takes three clicks we will show you why it takes three clicks and yet still retains that middle line and you can see there's a sneaky little model line there's some model lines taking place inside of there clicking here hitting escape from there we can still again we can go in here and we can grab a grid line and we can adjust this and our beams all going to adjust for us we can also change the beam thickness uh, and or depth and width if I click on the beam in any view I don't want to dimension that click on that I can click on the beam in any view I want go to the properties and change the beam width to be you know uh, 60 inches and maybe the beam depth to be you know 18 inches and then hit OK and then my beam is going to adjust accordingly and all my line work and everything is going to retain itself okay so really um, that is the family that we're going to create. Now if I decide later I only want one abutment turned on, I can go to here anytime and I can go to my properties and say, you know what, I don't want to see the right abutment and then I can hit OK and then I can turn that right side abutment off. Now I need to go back to my line work and use my by category and go in here and turn that little line back on. I'll change this to say um, hidden line, it'll be a little more apparent. Okay. Similarly, hitting escape, if I click on this beam and I go back into here and say, oh, I want, I don't want to see the left abutment and click out. Okay. I have to do, I have to go back here to by category and I have to turn on these lines to make those reappear. So uh, the challenge again was part of it is getting the line work to work um, and part of it just the turning on and off the visibility of those abutments. So that's all I really wanted to show you in this opening lesson and then we'll come back in our next uh, several lessons and we'll learn how we can um, build this family from the scratch up.